Can we just get a large new lover's pizza, please? Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Oh, Which one do you think very good? I think this is one. Just by the way it looks. That's more. That's got more bubbles. I'm thinking that's root beer. Ready? It is. Do it. Oh. You got it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Good job. That was. That was. You know what that's called? That's called deduction. That's what. That's what the great detective Sherlock Holmes does. Oh yeah, and you also can like tell like where your occupation is. Just right. by the way Look at his boots. Yeah. Look at the way his boots are scuffed. Obviously, this man has been around the Primshaws on the evening of this time. You know, he's like he does that stuff. That's what Sherlock Holmes does. He's, he's not, he's smart. It's not that he's smart, he just pays attention. Because at the, what's going on in this place right now, there are people behind me, I don't know what they're doing, and it's fine, because I don't think I need to. But like, the point is, when you come to a place, this is good advice too, make sure you know who you're dealing with. Make sure you know who's around you at all times, and like, if something's gonna happen. Just not in a big way, don't be like, but, but be like, um, just kind of case the place. It, a lot of this stuff I'm going to tell you, is, <laughs> it's going to kind of sound like I'm going to teach you about how to live a life of crime. Um, sure, I really am. Okay. And it's not good because I just got caught. And that's why part of the reason why I'm here. So what happened, kids? Your old Uncle Kevin, like Icarus, flew too close to the sun. I was thinking that I was the big boss hog and I was like really, really a talented thief. So I went to, I went to uh, Best Buy in North Carolina and I walked around and I saw this, I saw this voice recorder <laughs> sitting there and it, it was about this big and I was like, that will fit right in my little pocket here in my pants so I kind of like took it and wandered away and then kind of like went in the aisles and did all this stuff and like and the lady came up to me and was asking me about stuff and I actually had something to do in the Best Buy so I was like yeah okay can you help me with this and all this stuff meanwhile I, I, I had placed this thing in my pocket and so <laughs> I actually ended up buying something, and they were really nice. And then as I'm leaving, I'm like, okay, here's my receipt. And this dude, this little black guy, he says, you want to take the thing out of your pocket, man? And I'm like, oh, okay, this is where this is going. All right. Okay. And so I then said, yes, I guess this is happening now. And I pulled it out of my pocket, and I handed it to him, and I said, I don't know what to tell you, you know, I got I got an idea that I should do this and I probably shouldn't have, but whatever. And I was like, what what do we do? And I'll tell you right now. You wanna talk about white privilege, okay? The fact that it goes two ways. The fact that I was that I was able to like be in this position right now and not being like pushed against the wall or any of that and we're having a conversation <laughs> yeah. is because I'm a white guy and because I was dressed more or less like this and I didn't look threatened, okay? And the thing is, this, but this black guy, he's not doing gonna do me any favors because he knows that, like, if it had been a white guy when I was leaving the store, it would have been like like this. He'd be like, "We stole something." And I'd be like, "Yeah, I did." And he's like, "Get out of here! Never trouble my store again." You know, and it would have been this big dramatic thing. Black people do not act like that. They are serious about shit. I don't. Whatever this whole thing is, people thinking that black people are lazy and stuff like that. They are not. They are really, really uptight. And this guy was uptight, and he had me. Red-handed, okay. <laughs> so, where was? I? So I'm standing there, and all I, I'm, I'm like, what, what do I do next? And he's like, go ahead. And I, so I, because I give him the thing, I had my stuff, and I walk out, and there's a cop car parked 
across from where the door. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit, this isn't going to end here. So then I walked out to the guy, and he's like, you want to go back inside? we got to talk about this. So there's this two cops, and one's a white guy, and one's a black guy. And they kind of, like, take me to the back of the store, and I'm like, I'm doing this shit with my arms. Like, are you going to, like, do I have to, like, put my hands behind my head? I, I don't want to get shot over a fucking voice recorder. So, <laughs> basically... We walk back there, and he's, they just kind of put me in a corner, and the black guy's like, okay, what happened? And I'm like, I made a mistake, I put it in my pocket, I walked out with it, I, all this stuff, this is what happened. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know, I'm doing research for a book, and I, I bring out this thing, I'm doing research for a book, because I actually am. I was kind of doing research for this part of the book where there's this character named Yahweh, who's the best thief in the world. And he's trying to teach this girl, Diana, how to be a thief. And I was trying to get what it actually feels like to take something and put it in your pocket and kind of case the joint and look around and do all this stuff and, you know, figure out like how to do that and not get caught. <laughs> except I got caught. Yeah. So I was actually doing research for my book, but it's so hard to explain. I couldn't explain it to these cops. So the, the, the black guy is like, all right, uh, do you have any record? Do you have anything that you've done before you being chased by anybody? Do you have any outstanding warrants? And I'm like, I do not, sir. He's like, you sure about that? I'm like, I do not, sir. He's like, you're positive you don't have any. And I'm like, look, dude, I, I'm not going to be able to say this after today, but up to this point, I have never been caught for anything like this ever in my entire life. I've gotten tickets, that's it. And he's like, okay, we'll see. And he goes out, there's another serious black guy who was ready to, like, fucking put my cracker ass in jail. Because, like, <laughs> because that's what that's, they're very serious. <laughs> Oh. Anyway, and so then I'm sitting here with this white guy, and he's like, "So where are you from?" And I'm like, "Dude, are you talking? You wanna, we're gonna have a conversation now." Like I'm sitting here, and I'm like standing like in this in this Best Buy, and we're, this is what's happening right now is that we're gonna have a conversation. And he's like, "Yeah, well, well what do you what do you do for a living?" And I'm like, well, <laughs> for the most part, I do. I do like Postmate deliveries, and I do like graphic design on the side, and I do video editing for places, and I do all this stuff. And he's like, "Oh, okay, that's interesting." So, just what what brought you here today? <laughs> I'm like, he's like making time. I'm like, I just was walking around, and I just thought, I, I look, I really was, and I'm try, trying to explain the book thing again, and he's not getting it, obviously. And I'm just like, whatever, dude. We gotta. I, I, I just. I didn't want it out of the conversation. Is what I wanted. But he was like, "Okay, we're gonna go outside because you're kind of drawing attention. You, you're standing here like this. So collect all your stuff and let's go outside." So they took me out and they took me out to the front of the place. And so I'm standing out in front of the place. They haven't put cuffs on me or anything at this point. Nothing like that. I'm just standing there with my arms crossed, kind of looking off into the distance, and this guy's still standing there just kind of watching me because the guy's off doing his little computer stuff, right? He's trying to figure out if I'm like, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer, yeah, you know, like, and I just, they finally got their guy. So... He starts talking to me again, he's like, well, you know, this, this is like a stumble in the, in the road, and I'm like... Yeah, kind of. I mean, you know, I got caught. It's not, it's not great. I, I, I just kind of did it. He's like, well, you get your court date. Make sure you show up to your court date. I was like, of course I'm going to show up to my court date. I'm going to do everything that I'm supposed to do. This is not that big a deal. I just, I don't care. So I just sit there. I have to, like, make small talk with this guy for, like, 45 minutes. And I'm not going to recount everything that I had to talk to this guy about because we went from, like, he was, he was like, so, that's your car over there? It's really nice. Like, what kind of gas mileage does it get? And it's like asking me all these personal questions and stuff. And I'm thinking, like, am I, like, incriminating myself by talking to this guy? And I'm thinking, not really. He's just kind of like, I'm just here talking to you because you're a person. We're both people. So 
whatever, Andy Griffith, you're you're fine. And um, so finally, the black guy comes out of the car. He comes up to me, and he says, "Okay, here's your ticket." And I said, "Is that is everything good then?" He's like, "Yeah, here's your ticket. Show up at this date in here, and and I'll be it." And I was like, "Okay." He's like, "Oh wait, one second. This guy's got to come and talk to you." And so the guy at the door, the black guy, comes out, who caught me. He comes out and he looks at me and he says, "You can't ever come back in this store again." And I and I'm like, "I'm not gonna come back in the store again. There are other Best Buys in the in the world." He's like, "If you come back in the store again, we will see you and you will get in a lot of trouble. You have a no trespass thing on this plate. We don't want to see you in here again." And I was like, "Okay, could I actually buy the thing that I was gonna steal? Cause I had money." And I was like, "Could I just buy it? Would that make all this work work up for it?" And he's like, "No, it's too late. You already broke the law." And I was like, "Okay, okay, what else?" So we parted ways. So the the cops went off on their thing, and I got in the car. Everything's fine. <sighs> Fast forward a few days. I just was like, "I'm not even thinking about this, right?" Fast forward a few days. And I'm out doing Postmates deliveries and uh, in the night, and I come home back to the place where I'm living with my parents, and I come in, I go into my mom's room, and I'm like, Mom, I'm home from deliveries. Do you want to watch that show on on Netflix about the British lady who buys stuff and, and fixes it? And, and she's like, Kevin, we need to talk. <laughs> and I'm like, what do we need to talk about? You know what we need to talk about. And like, of course, my mind, I'm like, I have no idea. Cause I, what, what have I done? Cause it's been days since all this stuff happened. And, but she says, stealing Kevin. You're a thief and a liar. And I was like, ma, a thief and a liar. Oh God, this thing. So what happened was, as soon as you get arrested, they put your name in the computer, right? And then what happens is all these lawyers get your name and they mail a bunch of shit to the address that you give them and saying, hey, do you need a lawyer for this? Because you've been picked up for this crime. And I was like, Ma, did you open my mail? Because it only had my name on it. She's like, I accidentally did it. And I was like, Ma, you did not accidentally open my mail. That shit is not going to fly. You were stupid. She was snooping. It is, but it's, it's, it's and she found out. And she's like, that was a lie. A lie of omission. And I was like, I wasn't going to tell you. It wasn't a lie because it's my business. I don't have to do anything but show up in court on this one day. The judge is probably going to be like, you did it. And I'm going to be like, yeah, I did it. And he's going to be like, okay, well, you know, we're going to do whatever. We're going to slap your wrist and you can go. I don't think anything's going to happen. But she's like freaking out about all this. Yeah, but She's I like, you're gonna have to pay this thing. Is the story boring you? No. Okay. So, so I'm like, fuck this. I'm mad at this point because she betrayed my trust, but now she's mad at me because, and I can't be mad at her because she found out that I did something bad, and so it's just this terrible thing. And all I want to do, I go upstairs and I'm like, what do I do now? I have to deal with this shit in the house because what am I going to do? And so I say, you know what? I'm leaving. They bought me the car. Its car is in my name. I'm going to be paying Richard off for it, a hundred dollars a month. I had already made enough money from doing Postmates to send him a hundred dollars for January. I've got the car. Everything's fine. I'm just going to leave. So I started toward the door, and I said, Nah, I'm not going to leave right this second. I'm going to pack to leave. So then I packed to leave. And then I was like, okay, I got all my stuff together now, and I can just walk out the door. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to sleep on it. So I laid in bed and I didn't sleep but I stayed in bed and just kind of went in and out for like five hours and eventually I wake up and it's seven o'clock in the morning and I'm thinking I can't do this I can't leave and then I'm like yeah sure I can I can leave this is 
exactly what I should be doing right now is leaving because this is bullshit. So, but what I've done now is I then take my all my stuff and I'm walking down the stairs out to the driveway and I put the stuff in my car and I go back in and my mom's sitting in the chair and she's like, Kevin, bring that in. Bring that in. Bring those clothes in. You're not going anywhere. Give me those keys. And I'm like, Ma, I'm not giving you the keys. You bastard. You son of a bitch. You do this to me. You're gonna you're gonna hurt me like this. You're gonna run away again. You're gonna go back to California, back to Aaron, back to all your old life, and you're gonna do all this, you bastard. You're gonna do this, and you're gonna miss your court date, and you're gonna end up in jail, and I hope they rape you in prison. And I'm like, Mom, okay, that's a little taken a little far. Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Y'all should just a minute, okay? Yeah. And uh, and I'm just like, Ma, that's taking a little bit too far. We gotta talk about this. But she wasn't gonna talk about it, and I didn't want to talk about it. So I just said, you know what? Fuck this. I'm leaving. I'm going. And so I went, and I went to the car, and I started the car, and she marched out, and she said, give me the key to the door. And I'm like, fine, take the key to the door. And then she was like, you are such a bastard. And I roll the window up, and she's like looking at me like, she looks like the mummy from the end of the, the Lon Chaney movie. And she's like, mm. and like, And I'm just like, I rolled away, and I drove off. And I hung around in Raleigh for the day, and did a bunch of Postmate stuff, made a bunch of money, and um, and then as soon as I finished that, I was like, what do I do next? So I went, it was like six o'clock, I went to a Walmart and I bought a little dinner for myself, like nothing, and ate it in the car and then crawled into the back of the, of the Rogue and slept in the back of the car. And it was terrible because I need something between me and the back of those seats because they're very lumpy and I need to be able to stretch out. And I think I could do it, but it's just gonna be, but for the first night it was just terrible and I was scared because, you know, when you're out on your own, being homeless is not fun, right? When you don't feel like you have, being in a car is better than just laying on the street. But it's also kind of like, here's this big car. What happens to a car when it's sitting by itself all night long, you know what I'm saying? Like, do raccoons come and like start fucking the car in the middle of the night, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause it's just sitting there, not doing anything. And I was like, I don't want to have to deal with raccoons fucking on the car or any of this stuff because I'm like, so I just was very awake the whole night, okay? And it just was not fun. And that was basically it. And then, so, so eventually it was like six in the morning and I woke up and I was like, okay, six in the morning, I'm going to start heading north. And I want to talk to Dan, who I want to do, I want him to do work on my comic book with me, uh, my novel. I want him to turn my novel into a graphic novel. And, but he's squirrely, so he doesn't, he, I can't get him down anywhere, pin him down. So I call your mom and I'm like, she's freaking out. She's like, why are you calling me? And I was like, because I'm coming to see you. He's like, well, you can't because there's all this and we're not going to be home and all this stuff. And I'm like, whatever. Okay, fine. And so I was like, I'm going to go to Annapolis. And so I drive to Annapolis because that's where my aunt and uncle live. And I get to my aunt and uncle's place and I call my uncle. I go, ring, ring. I call my uncle and he says, hello, who's this? And I said, right, it sounded like my cousin. I was like, is this Peter? He's like, no, this is Francis. Because my Uncle Francis, you, do you know my Uncle Francis? No, okay. One, we have, we're all family at this point, but he's one step outside. He's this French guy, he's like Mr. France, and he just owns the smoke shop and is like been in Annapolis and is just this curmudgeon old guy. And he says, Is this Kevin? What are you doing? And I was like, I'm in Annapolis. And he's like, Okay, well, your, your aunt is asleep, so, okay. And I was like, well, all right, I'm just going to go. I just, I'll just i catch up with you guys tomorrow morning at like 9 o'clock. And I was like, he's like, okay, bye. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. I mean, it was off-putting. 
because uh, <laughs> because because I didn't know what he me- I, I, I didn't know what but I knew what was going to happen next because then w- what happened next was I went to Royal Farms do you know what Royal Farms is? Yeah. They have this chicken and the, 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 the potatoes are so goddamn good so I go in there and I order some chicken and potatoes and I'm like I'm just going to order some chicken and potatoes eat some potatoes and go to the parking lot in Annapolis and just sleep in my car again like last night so I come out of the Royal Farms and I get a call from my Aunt Kathy. And she says, Kevin, come to the place. Come to the apartment. And we will and you can sleep here. Right? And I was like, that's cool. I didn't really need to do that, but I guess I as soon as Uncle Francis answered the phone, I knew that that's what was gonna happen, was that Aunt Kathy was gonna <laughs> that Aunt Kathy was gonna um, call me back and say, "You gotta come here. She's not gonna let me sleep in the parking lot." So I went there, and they have this little apartment right on in the middle of Annapolis. It's like, Hunter, you are such a delight. They have this little apartment right in Annapolis, and they. Uh, I, it's kind of hard to get to. It's like in the middle of nowhere, sort of. But, but it, no, it's like right in the center of everything. But it's like in the old part of Annapolis, where the streets are really narrow and stuff like that. And so I finally get to the place, and they let me in, and I sit down, and I and I talk to them, like, thank you for letting me stay here. And that's basically where you're caught up to where I went the first day. Uh, which was that I got there and then we just talked for a while and had a nice time by this point my mom I think had like realized that she was being a terrible person (laughs) and she kind of forgave me I guess and so now she's she's okay with me and I went to sleep I I like I, well, I had an issue with this video that I was telling you about with the porn video that I'm editing. So I, but then I went to sleep, woke up this morning, talked to my aunt and uncle for like two hours, and then drove to Solomon's Island, looked at Solomon's Island, called your mom, or no, your mom texted Lisa to see if I'm going to go see Lisa tomorrow. That's going to happen. And basically, I'm just, we have been on the road since then. So that was a lot longer story than I think. I meant to tell, but uh, that's the gist of what's happened, has gotten me to this point. So, and then, so I just came and pulled up, and Andy was there, and he was, I didn't know him from anybody, so I'm just like, hello, and I'm really, I was like, am I going to get shot with a shotgun, because it, no, but it's, you know, it's Maryland, I, you know, I don't trust Maryland anymore, since I've been living in California and stuff. Maryland's kind of, yeah, but... Anyway, but he's like, no, go in there. Tracy's waiting for you. And I was like, okay, I think I made it. I think I actually got here. I'm it. And then I went in, and then you were standing there holding your little brother, and she was there, and then that's it. And now we're here eating pizza. And that's the end of my story. So I'll see you guys in the funny papers, okay?